There you Lars, go. if you could pick anyone in the world to be a dinner guest for you tonight, who would that be and why? Man, that's a good question. Who was the first person that popped into your mind? Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Interesting. Why Elon Musk? I just feel like guys like that, he's in he's just in such a league of his own. Not just because he's a billionaire, is the way his brain works. He runs three ridiculously successful companies. He like his just his entire life is is well, I'll tell you what, um, Robert Downey Jr. to prepare for Iron Man to be Stone Tony Stark went and shadowed and followed around Elon Musk to figure it out. Like really? Yeah. Was yeah. he already that rich at like like in 2008? I mean, he was already he had already created and sold PayPal for like four hundred million dollars or whatever he sold that for. Oh, Tes wow. Tesla was up and running, although around uh, in 2008, Tesla needed a the, Tesla was one of the companies that needed a, a government bailout to mm -hmm. uh, to survive. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, uh, Elon Musk comes to mind. Um, that's like a general person. If it was uh, comedy and acting related, I would say either Will Ferrell or Jim Carrey. Just I'm always more it. interested in the first person that pops into your mind because I feel like that's the raw, that's who you like at the bare bones of it. That's who you'd like to meet. Like, yes, we always want to meet like the actors and the comedians and like the, the stuff right. to get advice from people. But like, if the first person that pops into your mind is Elon Musk, like that's, that's the person that you really at your core want to go with that He's, you really yeah. want to talk to. I mean, it's kind of a weird choice because he's he's almost like to me, if you see him and, and listen to how he talks, like he's 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 very like I'm wondering, like, is he even human? Is he a cyborg? Like, is he AI? Like, did he, did he create a cyborg of himself? And it was just like, OK, I'm going to chill in my basement and let this robot go be a superhuman. And, and now he's going to Mars like it's just. And I know that there's there's a lot of people who are like fuck billionaires and and all that stuff. And yeah, I kind of like there's part of me is like you spend billions and billions of dollars on Mars or maybe spend a billion dollars to feed some people on Earth. Like that's mm -hmm. that's a pretty good argument. Um, but he's just prolific. Like he's just on another level. His brain operates on another level. One of the things that I was I'm always really impressed with him and he's 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 really awkward um, or he's often awkward. He's kind of funny, too. But I, I watched his Joe Rogan or one of his Joe Rogan interviews. And an interesting thing I noticed and really took away from it is a lot of the times when we're asked a question, we have an urge to immediately answer because we don't like the, the dead silence. But he would just sit. Joe would ask him a question. And he would awkwardly sit there like for too long where it would but he's thinking you can see the wheels turning and he's thinking of the question okay what is the question mm -hmm. and he's actually formulating okay what is my answer and he's thinking through that how can i best put that how can i maybe he's considering the pros and cons of what he's about to say mm -hmm. but i feel just his brain works on another level and, he, and it's just a different level of intelligence so i i, I really respect that that because a lot of times we just, you ask me a question, I just, bleh, whatever, like just verbal diarrhea that comes out of my mouth. And I think a lot of people do that, but he seems to be very thoughtful and he considers it to the point where when you watch some of those interviews, you're like, you you almost want to slap him. You're like, Elon, wake up. Wake up. Like, <laughs> like, he's, like his program is glitching, you know, like his, the software in his brain is just not, there's the, there's like the rendering line or like the circle kind of thing loading 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 but yeah yeah i think he's interesting nice cool what about uh, you uh scott niedermeyer it's nice. always gonna be scott nice. niedermeyer no matter nice. what i just i have to meet him i need to i don't know i don't know what it is about my life that's now become associated with this person if you don't know who scott niedermeyer is he was a hockey player 
who played for the New Jersey Devils for a long time, won three Stanley Cups with them. He won a Stanley Cup with the Anaheim Ducks in 2007, and he captained Canada to gold in the 2010 Olympics. Um, and I just think he is he is the epitome of what I want to be as an actor. Hmm. He is just so effortless on the ice. He's so smooth with his skating. Just so... The reason I became a fan of his is because in the Sega Genesis game, uh, I think it was uh, 1996 NHL, mm -hmm. he just set up the best one-timers. Nice. His, his AI set up the best one-timers. Right. And that was why I was like, this is my favorite player because he could do this. Yeah. Just... <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Well, Brandon Knox, a.k.a. the Scott Niedermeyer of acting. I've never met anyone else that's so committed to Scott Niedermeyer as their favorite player. No. And I, I would love to. I would. Uh, let's make this a call. Well, here's I'm going to make this a real. Yeah, yeah. Make, make it. Yeah. This is you and the Internet direct to Scotty boy right here. We, we can get to him. We'll DM him till he answers. Scott Niedermeyer, I am one of your biggest fans. I have admired you since I was seven years old. I think you are one of the greatest hockey players in the world. Please, we would love to do an interview with you. Or if anyone else is a big fan of Scott Niedermeyer, we would love to hear you. My DM is at Brandon Knox 27 on Instagram. Please, I want to hear from you. Nice. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we were, we were talking about that. Some dream guests like, yeah, Elon's great. Uh, I mentioned Jim Carrey. I mentioned Will Ferrell. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, any of those legends, Saturday Night Live legends, to me, I would really connect with with anyone. Um, I'd love to interview Shauna McKenna. She she was a she's an actress for uh, the Stratford Company, and she's she's such a fantastic stage presence. Oh my God, she is so good. I watched her do. Uh, Richard the Third, where she played Richard the Third, just the most compelling performer, like so engaging, so just in the moment. It's beautiful. It's beautiful to watch. So that would be one of mine. There she is. You heard it. You heard it here. Shauna McKenna. Let's do this. Shauna, what are you doing? Come on, Shauna. I'm surprised you haven't been on an episode yet, Shauna. <laughs> you too, Scott Niedermeyer. Scott Niedermeyer, come on, get in here. Right. And uh, listeners at home, viewers at home, if there's guests that you want us to uh, to go after, we've been keeping it um, very like uh, inner, cir inner circles yeah. and a lot of our friends and a lot of Laughing Vikings regulars because we want to showcase the people that are closest to us before we go after the stars, so to speak. But, um, but that's something that we want to do too. We want to uh, reach outside our current circle and interview other actors and comedians and maybe not even actors and comedians, just successful people who we can learn from and share with you. So if you have guest ideas, throw them in the comments or uh, you can send us an email to lol at laughingvikings.com or DM us at laughingvikings on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Show us the suggestions or maybe you got leads on it. You're like, maybe, one, maybe someone listening right now is like, guess what? Scott Niedermeyer is my uncle. I'm Jimmy Niedermeyer, and Scott is my <laughs> uncle. And he, I can ask him to go on your podcast for my birthday. <laughs> <laughs>